today on The DIY Designer. We are transforming three basic jackets into free people-worthy, store-bought quality, totally custom and one-of-a-kind jackets that you can rock for fall. Let's get into it. Guys, welcome to The DIY Designer. My name is Orly and I have a killer fall jacket DIY for you today. I am so excited because these came out so legit, they literally look like they belong hanging in free people right now. So I wanna show you my three inspos. This leather jacket with the stars, with the red pop, I'm obsessed with. I love how it looks worn in. I love how it looks handmade. It is so, so cool. This suede jacket, it's called a tattoo jacket, is epic. I love that each one of these elements could be personalized and customized to our particular style. And then this white, sort of like quilty floral patch jacket, which is so fun and kind of bohemian and hippy dippy. Now, the reason that Free People was sort of my inspo here is number one, it's very expensive, which means it's really fun to DIY. Number two, everything always has this kind of like worn in vintage vibe, which means it's really great for upcycling thrifted pieces, which saves a lot of money. And lastly, there's lots of handmade embellished qualities, things that feel kind of artsy which is perfect to use our Cricut for. Now, the reason I recommend the Cricut for this is that it is absolute precision. So everything that you end up adding onto your jacket will look store-bought. Now, Cricut is sponsoring this video and I just wanna thank them so much for that. You have no idea how much it helps me continue to produce content, continue to make videos. When I have brands like Cricut support me, so thank you to them. Now for today's video, I'm gonna use the Maker. The reason that this is so killer is that the Maker has a rotary blade and it can cut through like an insane amount of different fabrics. Now, if you guys don't know anything about Cricut, like I said, it is a cutting machine. And when you get it, it comes with something called Design Space for free. It's kind of like their Photoshop. There's all sorts of projects that are already made that you could just tap their project, upload it. It'll tell you what to do, how much you need, what colors, like it gives you everything. You could use some of their images. They've got thousands and thousands of images that you can use. You also have the option, of course, of designing something from scratch within Design Space, designing it in Canva and importing it. There's a million different options, but basically once you do it, it tells you everything you need. You feed it, you turn it on, and you go have a cup of coffee. It will do all the rest. It will cut it with absolute precision. So that's why I'm gonna use it today because I really wanted these to feel super professional and store-bought. If you guys wanna hand cut some of these things, you can probably do that with the stars and the flowers. The tattoo jacket would be very, very difficult. Um, but I'm gonna show you guys exactly how I made these. They came out amazing and I cannot wait to share. Let's do it. All right, let's start with this almost $600 tattoo jacket. It is so cool and perfect to personalize to ourselves. Now, when you go into the design space, I literally searched line art mountain and there was like a million options. So you can absolutely design all of these within design space. This time around, I decided to throw this into Canva. Anytime I'm doing a project like this, I like to take a photo of my garment flat on the ground and import it so that I can start to design on the garment itself. It helps me figure out scale, slope, arches, all of those different things. So I wrote, not all who wander are lost, which is one of my favorite quotes, played with some different font ideas, some different line art, added little graphics. Ultimately, this is the one that I settled on. So I exported this graphic with a transparent background. So when you go into design space, you upload image, you're just gonna drag and drop the image and it's gonna pull it in. It's gonna have you go through this process where it basically allows you to remove the white background. For this particular one, it was already removed, so I didn't need to do that. But if you have an image like this, which is white, you're just gonna tap. Anywhere that you tap, the white will disappear and it is basically telling the Cricut design space that all of that is the negative space that we want removed in the cutting process. So if you leave anything that you don't click, it will show it to you as solid. So if you need to go back and edit, you can edit. If not, you just click cut image and upload. Add it to your design space and size it and then click make it. Now, when you open this up, it's gonna show you, are you using a mat, are you not using a mat? I am using a 12 by 24 inch mat because I've got one and it's the perfect size for this project. So I click it and then I click everyday iron on. It is gonna tell me everything I need. Make sure mirror is on. It's going to let me know I'm not mirrored. That's a problem for iron on transfer because you do it face down. And so you always wanna make sure to mirror it. It's gonna tell me I just need my regular blade. So all is well. Now I just need to prep my uh, actual mat. This is navy blue. I realized I didn't film it, uh, film the black. I don't know why, but the process is the same. So you take your iron on, everyday iron on with the shiny side down, line it up, cut it to size. You're gonna feed it into the machine and the little arrow will suck it in. 
Then when it's ready to go, the C flashes and you press it and it cuts. It is gonna do its thing. Now you get to walk away and let it cut perfect precision. Grab your mat and your little weeding tool and you are just gonna start pulling out all of that negative space. That is everything that you either clicked or was automatically removed depending on how you imported it. So you're just gonna pull it out. It is oddly meditative and enjoyable. I highly recommend it. You're just gonna pull everything away. And there you go, even those tiny little stars. I mean, it's just perfect. I did the same thing with the um, phrase, not all who wander are lost, and my little stars. Now here is my like perfect leather jacket. I thrifted it. You can see the Goodwill tag right there. Could not believe my luck. Now everything fits perfectly because again, I mocked it up with an image of my own jacket, so it's perfect. I'm taking the graphic and making sure that it's centered on the seam. And I do like the slightest test. I never ironed on leather, so I was like really nervous. So I literally did like six seconds, looked at it. It transfers so easy on leather, you guys, like 10 seconds and it transfers. It's wild. I just peel back and it looks so freaking good. I like to take my thumb and kind of anywhere that there's a seam, like in, intensify the indent so it looks like it was printed directly on the jacket. Then again, I take the not all who wander are lost and line it up. Because I trimmed it really tight, I'm using the excess of that sort of transfer paper to protect my leather so I'm not ironing directly on the leather. I do recommend that. It will protect your fabric. You guys, I cannot wait for you to see what this looks like in movement, styled. It is so cool. It looks like it's printed directly on the jacket. It's incredible. Okay, next up, these guys. I was debating between doing like flannel stars on an army jacket or the leather stars on a leather jacket. So basically I cut both. Starting, all I did was go open up my design space and do add shape. There's stars, so I added a bunch of stars. I'm looking at my inspo jacket just to get a sense of how big the stars should be, how many I should have. I add them and then just click make it. It is automatically gonna put them on the mat in the most efficient way so that I'm wasting as little material as possible. Because I clicked leather, it told me to put in the rotary blade. So I just opened that up, popped in the rotary blade, and I did a little test to make sure it was good. It cut perfectly. So I'm taking the rest of my faux leather, faux leather side down, like right side down, so it's sort of grippy on the mat. And then I'm adding a little bit of ta uh, painter's tape just to make sure that my edges stay flat. Again, I'm gonna feed it into the machine. It's gonna measure, make sure that I have enough material and enough mat. Little light's gonna flash, I'm gonna press it, and it's gonna do its thing. Now here you can see the reason why the rotary blade is so cool for fabric. It rolls, lifts, rotates. Rolls, lifts, rotates. So there is no shredding, there's no pulling, there's no fraying at all. It is the cleanest cut you could get. Amazing for cutting sewing patterns, fabric, so cool. So here we go, I started with white and I just, something about the white wasn't working, it was too harsh. So I ended up using this like gray leather, which is what you saw me cut. It was my second crack at it. And I really love the way it looks. So I created my overall design and now I'm just gonna fabric glue them on to start. I am gonna sew them. But what I like doing is fabric gluing them so that they are all in place, flat, exactly where I want them. Anytime I do something like this, I recommend creating your pattern and then just lifting up one star at a time so you know exactly where to put it down because you can kind of see the gap. Now it looks good, but it looks to me like they were just glued on and it doesn't feel like it looks store-bought. So I'm doing a zigzag stitch. Now here's a little disclaimer. My machine is on its last leg. The little wheel that allows me to put the needle back down is not working. So every time I lifted up, the needle was up and it created a little loop of yarn, uh, thread, and it was getting stuck. It, so they're not the perfect zigzag stitch. It's like a little janky. It still looks good, but it wasn't perfect. So I really wanted to clean it up and again, make this look store-bought. So what I did is I grabbed some Angelus leather paint. This leather paint is the best. And so anywhere that either I can see the little like felty backing of the faux leather, which is a dead giveaway, I painted it black. I painted the edges of the leather sides black so you don't see that light color. And then I end up actually going in and like dabbing on top of the zigzag. It makes the zigzag stitch look like it's just a tighter zigzag and really gives the effect that my machine was not trying to ruin my life, which is great. Now, lastly, I wanted that red pop. I thought it was super cool and a really great detail. So I just used some painter's tape, a couple of thin, like lightweight coats of the Angelus leather. And then anywhere that I, you know, got a little red paint, no problem. The black acts like an eraser. It just literally takes it away. It is amazing. Ah, I can't wait for you to see this one. Okay, our last jacket. This is the little quilty one, which I just think is so sweet and beautiful. 
I went to Joann's and they have this really cool line of fabrics that are like very vintage looking, kind of old timey, sweet, feminine. I just thought they were beautiful. I grabbed a white jean jacket from Target and I felt like it needed to be cropped. I just thought the way I'd want to wear this is almost like a top. So I cropped it and then I'm also adding in a couple of slashes and cuts and then I'm gonna wash it. So I'll get a little distressing, a little fraying and I think that'll be great. These buttons I got to put in the center of each flower. I thought that might be nice as a little like embellishment and detail. And I also got some Wonder Under. This is basically turns anything into an iron on patch. So there's a rough side. You always do the rough side on the wrong side of your fabric. You're gonna iron it together and it's gonna fuse them together. Leave the paper on for right now. I'm gonna take my mat. I'm gonna do paper side down and just flatten it directly onto my mat and I open up design space. I just typed in flower and there's a million to choose from. I kind of like this wonky guy and I also like the more classic sort of retro bubbly one. So I just added in a bunch. Again, I sized them to random sizes and just sort of figured like I was gonna see if it worked. I had extra fabric so I knew that if I needed to cut more, I could. I go in and I actually clicked denim. Now this isn't denim, but I know denim uses the rotary blade. So sometimes you'll find that you'll have little hacks. You'll know certain material settings that work for many things. Denim is one of them. And if I didn't know I needed to change the rotary blade, you saw right there on design space, it tells me I need to. I was watching it like a hawk to make sure it wasn't shredding and it was cutting perfectly. Like not a single fray, not a single anything. They cut beautifully and then you peel off the paper backing and on the back side of the flower now is this super lightweight adhesive that is activated by heat. So I just use my little mini Cricut press. This iron saves me all the time and I'm ironing them on. I thought I would do a couple right around the buttons and I'm thinking maybe I'll add some to the buttonholes. That way if I actually button up the jacket, you still see the flower. I don't know, I'm figuring that out. And then I put some on the sleeve. Now, usually when I do stuff like this, I like to barely iron it on, just enough that I can like hold it in place while I try it on. If everything looks good, then I really go back in and like really, really iron it with, you know, pressure and heat and time so that it's really fused on there. I make sure obviously that my left sleeve matches my right. And then lastly, I just buttoned, uh, excuse me, sewed on the little buttons right in the center of each of these flowers. It just adds a, a pretty little sparkle. Now I had extra flowers, save that stuff. I'm not gonna do it now, but like at another date, I could add these flowers to something else. So anytime you have extra pieces, just save them. And then I'm not gonna show this whole DIY, but I did kind of want to do this shirt that I saw at Free People too. So this was another shirt I grabbed at Target. I always recommend putting it on so you can see how wide your graphic can go before it would get sort of sucked into the sides of your shirt. I cut it out of that navy blue um, everyday iron-on. That's what I was using in the beginning. Created the graphic, again, very simply created it in the actual design space ironed it from the front, flipped it and ironed it from the back. And then I ended up with this super cute little like graphic fun t-shirt. It's really cozy. And the cool thing is it's stretchy, which I love. All right, that's it. I'm gonna model these for you and show you what they look like. I've had them hanging on the back of my chair for the last two days. And every time I walk by, I'm like, mm, you're so pretty. So anyway, if you are a crafter, whether you do home decor, whether you want to start a business, whether you want to up your own game with your own DIYs, I really can't recommend Cricut enough. I've had it for a long time now and it just never disappoints. It's just so, so good and so reliable and I absolutely love it. Let's model. All right, I'll see you guys next week. I love you. Bye. I've been dreaming all night, bringing me some inspiration. Never meant to love no one. But baby, I saw you for a second and I'm happy that you came my way. Don't want to waste no time without you ever burning up my days. Never meant to fall so hard.
Now without you ever brightening up my days Never meant to fall so hard